Welcome everyone uh, to the American Heart Association Certified Care Webinar. My name is Steve Dental. I'm the uh, Director of Post-Acute Certifications for the American Heart Association. Today we will be presenting Transforming Care, Introducing the Skilled Nursing Facility Stroke Rehabilitation Certification. Before I introduce our primary speaker, just a couple of uh, housekeeping items. Number one is everybody will be on mute for the entirety of the webinar. If you do have a question and we encourage questions, please enter them into the Q&A section. There's a box. Um, I believe it's on a bar at the bottom of uh, the webinar. Um, in addition to that, the webinar is being recorded and we will be sending out a recording to um, all participants um, after the webinar. And uh, we look forward to um, addressing those questions um, at the end of the session. Dr. Um, Pamela Duncan will be our first speaker who I'm going to introduce and then I will be taking over uh, partway through the webinar to um, share some of the logistics of the certification itself. And so let me introduce our speaker. Dr. Uh, Pamela Duncan is a leading expert in stroke, neurological recovery, aging, and patient reported outcome measures, and widely recognized for her efforts to re-engineer post-acute services and recovery following stroke. She develops consumer-oriented uh, assessments to improve patient outcomes by guiding real-time clinical decision-making and recommendations for self-management, medical, and social services. She was instrumental in the development of the American Heart Association's post-acute stroke rehabilitation standards and is the chairperson of the American Heart Association's Skilled Nursing Facility Stroke Rehab Certification Work Group. Uh, welcome, Dr. Duncan. Take it away. Thank you very much. Thanks, Steve. Thanks, everyone. And thanks for joining us for this very important um, uh, seminar, webinar, uh, to really introduce to, I think there are over 200 people in the audience, uh, the new Stroke Rehabilitation Certification Standards for Nursing Homes. Let me just share a perspective with you. I've been on this journey for many, many years of uh, developing guidelines for uh, stroke rehab care. First guidelines that were ever put out were through the AH at that time, the AHRQ, Agents for Healthcare Quality, and they were in 1991. And we have um, re um, issued those guidelines across time in multiple uh, venues with the VA, the Departments of Veterans Affairs, as well as the American Heart Association. And the last ones were released in 2016. Over the course of almost a 30 year uh, uh, time span of introducing guidelines for care, we've established certain metrics of care uh, that are good processes, but we've never introduced them as quality standards. Uh, and this is extremely important for today's care. As all of you on this webinar, if you're from any facility know, whether you're hospital or uh, skilled nursing facilities or other rehabilitation settings, Patients are being discharged earlier and earlier uh, after a stroke. And in fact, there are major incentives for health systems, both financially, a lot of financial incentives for them to accept the stroke patients, but to discharge them as quickly as possible. And it appears that um, the time for uh, stay in a hospital now is going down on an average uh, to three days. That means that patients are leaving the healthcare system uh, acutely, uh, they don't look a whole lot different on day four or five than they did on day three and sometimes day two. Um, the brief hospital stay doesn't give uh, much time to do a comprehensive assessment of the patient, develop a, uh, a treatment plan that can be carried out through the trajectory recovery. So it's extremely important uh, today that we also work across all settings and especially nursing homes because uh, for inpatient rehab, most patients are going to nursing homes and most of you know that they are the preferred provider 
by many insurance companies. So it's critical that we establish uh, the processes of care. We've demonstrated over and over, and as uh, almost two decades ago, I did the research within the Department of Veterans Affairs that said that if you follow certain processes of care, you will definitely have better outcomes, and that's true across uh, multiple settings. So next slide, please. So I'm pleased. I'm on vacation. I look very casual. I apologize. I just walked off the golf course, but I will do anything to message to uh, to this community and this, especially this group is convened here today about why this uh, certification is extremely important. Next slide, please. So the American Heart Association has an entire certification portfolio, as many of you are aware. I always say that the AHA Get With the Guidelines for for stroke actually transformed acute stroke care. Um, it was it was very instrumental in establishing the 10 to 11 standards that has been demonstrated over and over. If you follow those standards of care, you do have better outcomes. There are additional post-acute um, uh, certification processes. For example, there's a heart failure certification that's been done uh, with the American Heart Association in skilled nursing, home health, and then palliative and hospice. And we also have, through the American Heart Association, a number of international certification processes. So the American Heart Association, have I've had the fortune to work with for many, many years in many capacities, has been a major leader uh, in, in really establishing processes of care. And so we are so pleased, and my colleagues, and I'll introduce them here in a moment, uh, we're so pleased to work with the AHA to develop stroke rehabilitation certification for skilled nursing facilities. Next slide, please. So what is the certification mission? The, the mission of the AHA certification process is to provide a framework for evaluating skilled nursing facilities against the American Heart Association science and guidelines for stroke rehabilitation patients. The certification provides validation that an organization has followed the requirements of the guidelines. Um, and it's very important that I emphasize that these were not ideas that were pulled out of the air, but they were vetted and developed from the evidence-based guidelines that uh, have been published uh, most recently in 2016. Next slide, please. So let's talk about the development of the standards. Next slide, please. So in 2019, uh, we had an journey. There was a national landscape survey of post-acute care facilities. It was conducted and the clinical practice guidelines were reviewed. And then they, uh, selected a writing group, which I chaired with Dr. Joel Stein from Columbia, uh, and where we actually went through these guidelines. We were convened, it was before 2020 and COVID, and we convened to look very carefully at these standards to establish key metrics, what we should expect all skilled nursing facilities to, uh, to provide. So then in addition to that, the American Heart Association went forward with funding from the Helmsley Foundation, they developed a learning collaborative. So we just didn't sit in a room, which you can see that we were in the beginning, sitting in a room with the experts in the field, trying to go through the guidelines, select the, the core standards. Uh, but then the American Heart Association went forward with those and went out into post-acute facilities in Montana uh, to gather feedback and provide a gap analysis of what are the standards, what's relative to the current practice. And then from that learning collaborative, we had another in-person writing committee convened in Dallas on April 2022 after COVID or after COVID went down and subsided. Uh, and then they were uh, uh, reviewed again and we approved them, the AHA Office of Science and Medicine on June 2nd, 2022. So that's extremely important too, for you to realize that um, in order to put these standards forward, they're vetted uh, with the experts, they're vetted in the field with post-acute facilities, and we selected Rural America, Montana. We also did programs in South Dakota and, and other places to say, well, what, what are the gaps? And then 
the American Heart Association Science Review Committee uh, uh, reviews everything that we put forth to make sure they stay with the best levels of evidence practice. And then there was in 2022 and still ongoing concurrent pilot testings conducted in four states and the uh, certification writing work group formed to transition the standards to certification. So it's been a um, lengthy process. This is 2024, five years in development with leading experts, testing in the field, approval by the American Heart Association Science and Medicine Committee. And then we, from that, have put together these standards. And again, I want to applaud the American Heart Association. They don't pay me for saying this. Uh, uh, they, the, for I've just been a volunteer in the commitment that we've had with the AHA to, to elevate post-acute stroke care. Next slide, please. So here are the guidelines that were published in 2016. I actually uh, have privilege. There's another set of guidelines, very similar to these coming out from uh, uh, the VA and DOD uh, that should be forthcoming, but the standards are, are staying the same. Again, the gap has been, are they implemented in the field, right? And how does that affect outcomes? Next slide, please. So certification requirements, uh, there are uh, several uh, points and, and uh, Steve Dentel can elaborate on these, but there has to be an overall program management, uh, people in place who are gonna manage uh, the stroke program within the facility. Uh, there needs to be uh, education, uh, continuing education credits for personnel about the standards, uh, the quality of stroke care and how we implement this. And very importantly, is that we also have patient and caregiver education. Now, you all say, no, duh, we do that. But what we found in the course of care, and I've certainly spent a lot of time in the last few years, is that patients and caregivers are, those of you on the front lines know that they're very overwhelmed when they have a stroke. And you may be communicating with them, but they don't always hear what you what you say. So we put standards for exactly uh, what should be included in that education and that we be able also to continue that education through their journey of stroke uh, recovery. Care coordination is really important. And this is critical for you in the skilled nursing facilities. Um, that care coordination, there are multiple standards in there, but uh, one of the ones I'd like to emphasize is because patients are really uh, being discharged so quickly from acute care, it's critical that you get, as part of the transfer of the patient, a very comprehensive discharge summary to understand the course of their stay in the hospital, but also a very good uh, perspective on their comorbidities and prior history. The clinical management becomes a critical, as we'll emphasize in a moment, but uh, it's very important and a standard that we put forth is because patients are uh, being discharged so quickly, they should be seen by a physician, a PA or a nurse practitioner within 48 hours. And then there will also be uh, performance improvements that you've got um, uh, systems in place where you can benchmark your uh your care by certain performance indicators. So these are the certification requirements. Next slide, please. So what are the measures and the metrics? Um, first of all, we, again, if when you look at the standards, there are a lot of components of them, uh, but we thought that it was very important to hone them down to uh, six major uh, assessments uh, of, of, of performance. First of all, uh, that people uh, have at, have the opportunity to have speech and language therapy. So it's a percentage of stroke patients with aphasia who receive speech and language therapy during post-acute rehabilitation. And that's a very important standard because a lot of uh, nursing homes have, they have to have physical therapy uh, in order to provide inpatient rehab, uh, but not necessarily speech and language. But obviously, patients' cognitive functions, speech and language uh, deficits are major, major challenges uh, that should be addressed. There's got to be an education about the impact of stroke. 
uh, percentage of stroke patients or caregivers who receive education, the personal risk factors for stroke, the common physical, emotional, and sexual consequences of stroke, and really importantly, what are the warning signs for stroke? Now, you may say, why is that? Okay, they've had a stroke, they should know the warning signs. Well, and believe it or not, in a number of our prior research studies, we've shown that once patients have had a stroke and they have warning signs of a second stroke, they're less likely to seek care. Can you believe that? And we've tried to always understand that. So I had a stroke once, uh, I survived that. But they need needs to be reinforced what the warning signs are, and you still need to seek immediate care. Uh, and that they have immediate follow-up after discharge and medications prescribed, and what those medications are and why. We just finished a big study in the state of North Carolina, for example, which patients didn't go to nursing homes, they went directly home. And we found that when they went directly home from inpatient, re, not, excuse me, in a hospital discharge, 20% within seven to 14 days were not compliant with their medication. Uh, and actually 48% did not necessarily endorse that blood pressure, high blood pressure caused their stroke. So education, education, reiteration, and uh, definitely they have to be, uh, uh, have to know medication literacy and do they have the cognitive ability to manage their medication. Post-stroke depression screening is extremely important. Um, and again, we say, well, they've had a stroke, wouldn't you be depressed? Absolutely, but over, we have to address those issues as we deal with the patients in skilled nursing, as well as we move forward to the trajectory. Again, many of you know my professional degrees of physical therapist, but many, many years ago in the Kansas City Stroke Study, when we looked at the course of recovery over six months and we controlled for stroke severe, severity, one of the biggest predictors of recovery were whether they were depressed or not. And believe it or not, it was higher than their physical function. Again, VT uh, uh, pro prophylaxis is critical. The percentage of patients with impaired mobility who receive prophylactic treatment so that we don't have a, throw a, a pulmonary embolus and uh, have VTs, uh, venous uh, occlusion. And really, really important, and one that I'm spending a lot of time on in my own career now is what happens to the patient when they're discharged? We're, we're functioning in, in continued function in complicated patients like stroke. Here's, here's inpatient, here's post-acute care, and here you go into the community. And again, the time of that hospitalization and even in nursing homes is getting briefer and briefer. You probably can tell me, those of you on the call, but uh, my uh, research tells me that on the average you're in the hot, in the skilled nurse facility 14 to 21 days, which is a very short time to get really comprehensive rehab and care. They need to be followed in the community and referred to the appropriate uh, services in the community, both community-based services, as well as um, uh, continuation in home health or outpatient physical therapy or outpatient speech and language or outpatient therapies. So discharge follow-up is extremely important and declare a conflict of interest. I'm actually working very diligently uh, after all the work that I've done is to bring a support system to help nursing homes, hospitals to to assess those patients and get them the correct community resources. And this is a, a major uh, a standard that we set forth for nursing homes, which is different than has been in the past, uh, that I said 48 hours, it is actually 24 hours. The percentage of stroke patients who have an assessment performed by a physician or an advanced practitioner within 24 hours of admission to the facility. Again, extremely important given the short length of stay uh, in, in the hospital. So many of you can address those issues and know that you're getting more severely disabled patients in shorter period of time. So we need a nurse and a doctor, a nurse, not just a nurse, but a nurse practitioner or a PA or a doctor to see them right away. Next slide. And then we will also look at how do you capture these metrics? How do you measure it? And stroke rehabilitation discharges from the program. The metric description for that is the number of short stay rehabilitations with a principal diagnosis of stroke discharge from your facility each quarter 
the stroke rehabilitation average length of stay, the average length of stay for a short stay rehabilitation uh, uh, period for patients with a principal diagnosis of stroke. And again, very importantly, what is your discharge disposition after the short stay in rehabilitation? Um, did you go home? Did you have to go to long-term care? Uh, did you go back to the hospital? What Really, what happened to you? And again, I don't need to reiterate to you what all the standards are for Medicare because they do look at things like hospital readmissions from your facilities. Again, I think uh, speaking just after many, many years of, of practice and advocating for better care, uh, the way to keep these patients out of the hospital if they come to your facility is provide comprehensive, medically directed, integrated team care. And definitely the most important, important member of that team is a patient and the caregiver that we function cohesively. These are high standards in today's nursing home environment. We realize this, but it really, really is the right way to care for these patients and also gives you in these competitive markets a competitive advantage to think about how you are uh, managing these and do you have certification status. Next slide, please. So again, uh, this group of individuals, uh, I can call each one by name, but I just wanted you to see that they represent every major discipline from the leading uh, uh, physicians in rehab and neurology, Richard Zarowitz and Joel Stein, uh, and we have occupational therapy, nurse practitioners, Barbara Lutz has been one of the most premier nurse practitioners in stroke recovery and has spent uh, a lot of her career dealing with the major issues in caregiver burden and caregiver assessment. Uh, again, just to comment, it's really important that when we discharge these patients, we understand not only the capability of the patient, but the capability of the caregiver as they transition at home. Uh, and then we have social workers, we have speech and language pathologists, uh, and we have uh, uh, representation from several physician groups. And we also have a, uh, Susan Pugh was a nurse, is a nurse, and she's from a uh, uh, certified nurse specialist, and she is actually from an inpatient facility. So I wanna compliment and thank my colleagues who joined me on this endeavor. Um, you see their bright smiling faces, but it was a lot of hard work. But in honesty, you guys, can I call you you guys? In the South, we say y'all, y'all listen to me. Unless we <laughs> implement these standards, uh, unless we uh, have certifications like this, I don't think we're gonna be able to be transformative in our care. Um, it's very concerning to me as someone who's done this for a long time that um, the period of post-acute care for these patients is shrinking, shrinking, shrinking. And all of you know some of the challenges we have with payers in, in prior authorization just to get them the care that they need. So please join us this esteemed group of colleagues who did most of the work. I didn't. Joel, I just was the lead of the orchestra. Uh, and again, I want to thank the American Heart Association. And I thank each one of you for attending uh, and hope that you'll move forward with this certification. So I'm going to turn it over to Steve Dentel. We'll tell you exactly what it will take to be certified. And then we'll open it up to questions. And I'll be glad to answer any questions. And my contact information is at the back of the uh, presentation if you want to reach out to me. Steve, it's, it's your, yours. Thank now. you. Thank you, Dr. Duncan. Uh, next slide. So as Dr. Duncan was sharing, you know, one of the things, um, and this really kind of highlights those six standards, um, you know, the American Heart Association really um, is with you every step of the way, you know, and as she said, you know, quality of care is at, you know, at the top of our minds, you know, and what it is that, you know, we want you to be focused on. Um, and having a Z-specific stroke rehabilitation program um, in place, um, if you are hitting those standards, as she talked about, you know, having, having a dedicated program with oversight of it, having uh, the staff uh, education that is required to uh, make sure that your staff 
um, actually uh, understand, you know, what it takes to care for a, a stroke populate stroke rehab population. Um, in addition to that, you know, uh, making sure, you know, patients, caregivers, that there is a uh, will and willingness and capability of receiving education. And then, she, you know, as she emphasized, you know, care coordination is so important, not only receiving the patient into the facility, um, but what is happening while they're under your care and then at discharge um, to, the, to the next level, if that's at home or um, wherever that may be. And then um, clinical management, which really that focuses on making sure those evidence-based guidelines that she talked about, about that your pathways, order sets, algorithm specific to stroke are um, backed by those clinical practice guidelines that are out there. And then last but not least, she gave a great overall presentation of um, what does uh, performance improvement, you know, including, we, we know that every skilled nursing facility has a QAPI committee um, that focuses on certain um, aspects of performance improvement, but what are the performance improvement things around those measures and metrics um, that she showed um, that you're doing to improve upon your, your um, stroke rehabilitation care? Next slide. So, this, if you are interested in certification, um, I'm going to kind of go through what what does the process look like? Um, because this is important. You know, first off, um, the thing is, is if you um, have a program in place um, and a lot of those things that we talked about from a standards perspective that you you have the, those things. You know, certification is a way to validate what it is that you are doing. Um, so the certification itself, when you um, want to pursue this, uh, you um, have to sign an agreement. Um, and the certification, um, when, you, when you ultimately become certified, you're certified for three years um, by the American Heart Association. Um, part of getting prepared for certification is that you really are doing a gap analysis to see, okay, are you checking all the box check boxes and uh, meeting all those um, little things that are necessary for the reviewer to say, okay, you've met this threshold, you've done this, you know, you have this in place, and so on. And we actually have, and I'll. And I'll I'll show you, it's a, a portal called our quality and certification tool in which um, that you enter evidence that you are uh, meeting those certain uh, standards and requirements. Um, upon, you know, moving through this process and whenever you are putting things into the QCT quality certification tool, um, uh, the reviewer will um, complete an evaluation of those documents uh, and make sure you're meeting the standards um, and may reach out to you with some additional questions. And then at that point in time, um, as they're going through the desk review in subsequent fashion, they'll be setting up a time for you to have a virtual um, review presentation with them. It's a 90 minute um, call um, either on Zoom or Teams um, in which your organization will uh, present a PowerPoint of your stroke rehabilitation program, which really kind of it augments and tells the story of what you submitted in your desk review. And that's where the reviewer, um, you know, will ask additional questions. Um, at the end of that virtual presentation, then the reviewer then completes a report and sends it to, uh, we call it our CEW, it's an expert panel, um, who will actually um, review the recommendations of the, the, the reviewer. And um, generally within a short period of time, 
Um, the members of the CEW will sign off um, saying that you're certified. And then at that point in time is really when the excitement and your your journey begins and that you're notified of your um, being coming certified. And really, um, it you know, a lot of people think it's like when we get no notified that that's that's, you know, the pinnacle of it. But that just really starts um, the point, you know, of continuing on that journey and improving on the care that you're providing. Um, and really, how do how do we then um, let others know that we've met this um, threshold and we've become certified by the American Heart Association? Next slide. Okay, so one of the great resources that we do have out there is called our healthcare network. Um, this is different from the QCT, but our healthcare network is an online peer-to-peer -peer platform that really facilitates um, your journey towards certification and even there afterwards. Um, it enables facilities to access a very, you know, um, a lot of tools and resources even, and even ask questions and engage with other organizations. Um, you might get, you know, questions like, okay, this, you know, hey, does anybody out there have a dysphagia screening tool that they really like to use at their skilled nursing facility that they'd be willing to share? Um, it also has examples of things that are part of the requirements. Like one of the things that um, we ask for as part of uh, the overall management is that you have a charter. There's an example of what a charter could look like. Uh, we obviously, you know, as we provide resources, we don't want you to just take what's on there, put your name at the top, and then turn that in as, okay, here's, here's our organization. It really is meant to be a template in which you make it your own and really show um, what it is that you are doing. But it kind of walks alongside you and really provides some a lot of valuable information um, and especially educational resources for um, patients, for uh, caregivers, and even professionals and staff. So, um, you know, this, a lot of these educational materials are backed by the American Stroke Association and um, all the things that they've been doing for years, uh, which, you know, is part of the American Heart Association. So, a lot of valuable resources as part of this healthcare network that, you know, really shows that, you know, this really is a collaboration and we're walking alongside you, as I said at the first slide, to help you, um, you know, move in the direction of where we can validate the care that you're providing. Next slide. So talking about the quality and certification tool, um, once, um, once you actually, um, you become contracted with us, this really is um, utilized in several fashions. One, we talk about uh, when you, you ultimately go before the review team and for them to um, be able to uh, see those documents and evidence that you're meeting certain standards. So um, there really is a way that we're, you know, um, you know, we'll say, for standard three, um, you know, what materials do you provide to patients on this? And this is where you can, you know, upload the documents in there. It's very user friendly. You just put a label on um, and a description as to what that document is, and you can just upload it. Um, the thing is, is we don't uh, accept any PHI into this, you know, so um, we we stress that um, immensely, you know, with the organizations um, because, you know, it's for the protection, you know, most importantly of the patient, but before, protection for both organizations, uh, your organization and the AHA. Um, the other great thing is the QCT really is a one-stop shop, not only as you are working to get certified, but then once you do become certified, that is where your branding guidelines, um, your logo, your certificate, all these things are found. 
um, you know, within the portal itself, the QCT. And additionally, as part of the requirements, um, you know, um, Dr. Duncan had mentioned or was shown those measures and metrics. So you are, to maintain your certification, you are required to um, upload um, or put in the numerators and denominators for those measures and metrics on a quarterly basis. Um, you know, it's recommended that um, you obviously are looking at that data in more in a more frequent fashion, but from the to maintain certification, um, we really want to make sure that you're uploading that information into the QCT on an ongoing basis. As a result of data being uploaded, then you actually have the ability to look at trends within your data. We have a dashboard um, for sites. And on top of that, then there's also a national benchmark. So you can actually see um, how you're doing uh, in comparison to other facilities. So um, as I said, the quality and certification tool really is very user friendly. Um, and it really is an ongoing way to um, look at how you're trending from a quality improvement standpoint and what things that you may need to address within your facility itself. Next slide. So what are the benefits for certification? And, um, you know, if, if we would, if we would, you know, go back and I'm, I'm not telling you to go back on the slides, but if we would look at, you know, our standards, you know, probably at the center of everything is what, what is happening with the patient. Um, and that's where, you know, the, you know, as Dr. Duncan shared, you know, the guidelines are really developed to provide optimal care for the patient. And this is where, um, you know, for patients that are seeking out, um, you know, skilled nurse, uh, you know, you know, skilled nursing facilities that um, they, you know, need to receive stroke care at, which ones, you know, um, actually have the hard check mark, mark on it so that they can know that these facilities um, are providing the services that are um, being, um, you know, validated and backed by the American Heart Association as it relates to science. Um, and this is where, you know, if you look at the guidelines, you know, the, the, these sites, you know, they're, they're pretty high standards that we require that this treatment is really coordinated throughout the whole process, you know, from the time that they get them and even, um, you know, post discharge, you know, and following up with the patient. So, um, it provides some reassurance to the patient and our caregivers that they, they are receiving um, you know, quality um, stroke care. Next slide. So what about um, the organization um, themselves, you know, and I, I think this is where, um, you know, Dr. Duncan brought up about Give With the Guidelines. You know, we have how many Give With the Guidelines hospitals out there that are doing, um, incredible work to improve outcomes for patients, you know, while they're in the hospital. Um, and then at some point in time, the patient is being discharged. And if it's the skilled nursing facility that they qualify for, for rehabilitation services, um, then this is an opportunity for us to, you know, especially let, you know, those um, hospitals be aware of these are the skilled nursing facilities out there um, that actually have a certified program in place. Um, and this is where, you know, with the organizations, you talk about collaborating with other certified organizations. That's where that healthcare network comes in um, to play. In addition to that, as I said, um, it really is um, walking alongside you, not only, um, you know, during your journey towards certification, but even once you become certified, this is where um, ongoing education and different topics that come up about stroke rehabilitation, we want to make sure that we keep you at the forefront of things that are happening 
um, in your environment that is only going to enhance and improve the quality of care that you as an organization are seeking. Next slide. Um, and then your referral sources, going back to the, um, with regards to the uh, hospitals themselves or who may be referring you, um, you know, to receive stroke rehabilitation care. Probably, you know, one of the most challenging things is, um, you know, is that communication. And when I say communication, meaning the proper communication, care coordination is such a key component to preventing unnecessary readmissions, um, issues that pop up. And um, this can't be stressed enough because it can't be that, you know, the hospital uh, who may be making the referral is living in a, a silo um, in comparison to the skilled nursing facility, that this is coordinated care across the continuum. And this is where you know, and looking at those measures and metrics, you know, that this really goes hand in hand along with following the standards that how can we make sure that that system of care around stroke is truly happening? And this is where it provides the, you know, best chance for the optimal outcome for the patient, you know, across all levels of care, including the referral sources, you know, and potentially um, you know, them understanding and even um, insurance providers understanding that, okay, that this uh, skilled nursing facility actually does have a stroke rehab program in place. Next slide. So just to kind of reiterate some of the things, you know, the value um of certification, number one, it really is designation for excellence for the care in your patients. Um, it's a commitment that you put forward. Like I said, this is not just a one-time thing where you work um, to upload some documents and so on. It's about you having a dedicated program in place and that it's, it's ongoing. Uh, and then it provides a market differentiation, you know, for you um, you know, amongst other skilled nursing facilities, you know, in letting them know that, you know, you, you have a certified, uh, stroke rehab program. Um, you know, our, our hope is, you know, and we've seen this, um, especially with our other skilled nursing facility certification, uh, for heart failure is the reduction in unnecessary readmissions. Um, you have now an ability to leverage you know, measurable results with your patients. Um, and this is where, you know, again, trying to foster that system of care, you know, working in conjunction of connecting you with uh, our AHA certified and award-winning get with the guideline hospitals in your area. And again, fostering that system of care approach and really, um, you know, AHA walking alongside you, not only leading up to certification, but afterwards. So Next Steve, slide. can I make a comment? Okay. Sure. This is really important what Steve is saying. In addition to guidelines, the American Heart Association, as well as many uh, other uh, international groups, have really um, set standards for systems of care, that it's not silos. Uh, and with the partnership with the Get With the Guideline Hospitals, the Comprehensive Primary Stroke Centers, um, this would be an opportunity for to be a seamless system of care, at least to, to discharge. And that's where the major gaps are. Comprehensive stroke centers don't mean comprehensive care. They mean that you have uh, acute stroke care in which you have eligible um, neuroradiologists, interventional radiologists, as well as uh, the ability to image for 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 stroke and uh, for to be able to deal with thrombectomy and TPA, 
but this would mean that we could expand the the comprehensive care of patients if we have a partnership with existing health systems. Because health systems are really, really under stress right now. All of you know that they're on the front lines and they don't want to send their patient to any just available nursing home bed or any home health or any inpatient rehab. They really want to be able to know that they have partners that are part of the systems of care and be able to link and connect with those certified award-winning hospitals could be a big boost to your facility. But again, as Steve has said, this isn't about facilities. It's not about hospitals. It's about patients and the quality of care that they receive and the trust that they have uh, in their providers. So this system of care, in addition to the guidelines, they with their number of AHA position papers, as well as other international groups on creating systems. And I would say, again, I want to applaud the American Heart Association as taking this bold step um, to get at least uh, a beginning system of, of care in place uh, with these quality standards. Thank you, Dr. Duncan. Um, next slide, Fiona. Um, this is just, uh, I'm just going to kind of get go over some slides. You know, again, we don't, we haven't had our first um, skilled nursing facility for stroke re rehabilitation certified yet. Um, but, um, you know, we have, as Dr. Duncan showed before on the one slide, we've had um, several certifications in the post-acute space, um, specifically for heart failure um, or um, skilled nursing facilities. And really, um, you know, one of the key things is, you know, people do recognize um, the um, AHA brand. And this is so important, you know, as, um, you know, potentially somebody may um, ultimately, you know, because everybody's asking questions, you know, there's there's a more educated consumer population now in really um, trying to figure out, OK, where do I want to send my patient? And this is where um, with the recognizable brand, it, it becomes very important. Next slide. This will give you an example of some, some of the facilities um, that ultimately have become certified. Um, there's several of them that were up in the uh, Northeast area. Um, as you can see um, in the lower right-hand corner, this is a skilled nursing facility that got certified for heart failure, um, same way as the one on the top. And you can see where they, um, you know, utilize the, their certification logo um, from a standpoint of on their websites and through, through some apps. Uh, aspects of digital marketing. Next slide. Um, same way as this, is, you know, this would be an example on the left of, you know, the certificate that you you may receive. And these were um, two press releases that got pushed out, you know, um, you know, at the early stages when we were doing this uh, heart failures uh, certification for SNFs. Um, in which there was um, HNSS sites that were part of our initial pilot project for skilled nursing um, for heart failure that ended up getting um, certified in the same way as Beth Abraham was uh, one of our uh, first ones um, in the New York City area that ended up getting certified. And next slide. And you could see some, you know, some unique ways in which people uh, promote their certification, including on the side of a building. Next slide. And um, I think that is, that's all the slides. Um, Fiona, can you, can you forward it to the next slide? So, um, you know, before we jump into some of the questions, uh, here is some contact information. Um, if you need to get a hold of Dr. Duncan, here is her email address. Um, in addition to that, the our general certification email, if you are looking for additional information, 
Um, we, you can reach out to us directly at certification at heart.org. And then our heart association, our skilled nursing facility page that has some additional information. There is the link to that, um, that website. Um, so I know we have a limited amount of time, um, to wrap up the webinar, but, uh, I am going to jump into some of the questions that I'm going to filter through them. Um, there's a question that's commonly asked where it's, are we going to be able to get a copy of the slides in, um, yes, we'll be able to send out the, uh, copy of the slides along, uh, with a recording of the presentation itself in the near future. Um, a lot of logistical questions. Uh, how long, uh, okay. Uh, the question came in was how long is the course? Um, it's not actually a course. Um, like I said, it's about you having a stroke program in place of the certification it's for the facility. Um, and the cost, that's a great question. The cost is, uh, $2,000 um, per year um, per facility. Um, another question uh, was, uh, how, how can I, um, if I'm a, an acute care hospital, uh, how can I know which sites are certified? Um, several ways. One is we do, um, as sites become certified, we do list them on our um, website. Um, but in addition to that, um, one of the things that we really try to do is reach out to our hospitals that we're already working with and send them um, and let them know what facilities actually are certified in their region as they become certified. Um, and that was another question. Yeah, that, that was a question that creeped up also. Um, um, so, uh, a couple questions and then, and then I'll turn one of question for Dr. Duncan. Um, uh, how do we know that, how do we ensure a facility is actually following the standards, um, you know, after certification? Um, great question. Part of that is we do have, you know, the data requirements that, you know, we're closely monitoring on a quarterly basis, but there all also is um, intracycle check-ins or intermittent check-ins with the site to um, really determine if uh, there has been any changes, um, you know, along the way and making sure that they're maintaining the level of care that, you know, they presented when they were initially certified. Um, one of the, the questions that did come up has to do with inpatient rehab facilities. Um, this is not, uh, the certification um, is not for inpatient rehab facilities. It is only for skilled nursing facilities and does this um does this change what you know the 2016 guidelines say say and that's no uh because this new certification for SNFs really was it, it, it's an effort to address a gap in um the post acute care certifications that are out there and make sure that patients who do, do go to a SNF uh, for their stroke rehab, receive the quality of care that they deserve. Um, and I think, uh, Dr. Duncan, I'm going to pick a couple questions for you. Um, from your expertise, what are some of the clinical things that a skilled nursing facility may find challenging but necessary to um, meet, you know, what, what we're putting forward um, around these standards? Well, I think 
uh, and again, we vetted these in um, in in uh, several states. Uh, one may be the speech and language pathologist, uh, but now you can do that through virtual uh, communications, and you can have access to to speech and language pathologists to come in. The other one that honestly we debated a long time on the standards was this twenty four hour assessment by a nurse practitioner, a PA, or a physician, uh, and this has not been, you know, the requirements for inpatient uh, uh, rehabilitation paid for by Medicare. But given this uh, incredible um, short length of stay, um, this immediate assessment and having that medical provider there is extremely important. Patients can go down really quickly. Um, and I think the other thing that, again, we, we is this interdisciplinary, again, we've shown over and over by having interdisciplinary teams uh, meet and work together to develop this plan of care uh, is, is may not, especially if you have contract therapists coming out, in and out, uh, may not be quite as easy. But uh, the, it, it is a team effort that requires uh, communication among all members. Um, I think one thing that uh, is on the horizon, it's now mandated in 2024 for acute hospitals to understand the social determinants of health uh, of the of the patients that you have. Again, I think rehab teams uh, have been ahead of the game of CMS for a long time, but not only measuring that, which the standards are from the Center for Medicare and Medicaid, but making it actionable. For example, if the patient can't afford their medicines, right? Well, okay, it's not enough to give them the medicine and say, here, I've told you your medicines and I've told you, you know, why you should take them. Uh, but you need to ask, can they afford the medicines and link to resources in the community where they can get in medicines either free or inexpensively. I'm not here to promote anybody, uh, but I can tell you, living my own personal experience with my husband who has medical issues, I mean, 99.9% .9 of the people don't know about good RX. I just saved $100 by using a good RX card instead of my payer, which Medicare Part D, or going to Walmart where the where they have very low cost formularies compared to others. So I think it's important that when we discharge patients, uh, we understand can they afford their medicines, for example? Uh, do they have transportation to get back to the facility? This, this, is, a, this is an expanded scope of work um, that uh, we have paid attention to in rehab, but now is being escalated to a higher level of requirements. So please reach out to me if you have questions like this. Uh, uh, because, again, with the American Heart Association, uh, we really want to ensure that we have systems of care, hospitals and nursing homes knowing who's who, what the quality of care that you should expect at these facilities. And um, and I think this is a, a this is a beginning step. I mean, patients and families reach out to me, find me on the Internet and they're like, oh, my goodness, mother's in the hospital. They're going to discharge her uh, tomorrow. And I have no idea where to go. Right. And the payer is delaying it because of prior authorization. So what, what do I do? We just have to start being very, very uh, aggressive and supporting patients and families and know the quality of places that they're being discharged to. Um, I, I know we're arriving at time and um, there's a couple of questions that went unanswered. Um, we will make sure that um, we respond to them um, and we'll send them out as a follow-up. Uh, but we wanted to um, thank everybody for attending. We can't, um, you know, thank you enough for all the work that you do, um, you know, around stroke patients and um, your interest in learning more about this certification. And Dr. Duncan, thank you so much. Um, you know, I'm going to, uh, any closing remarks on your part? No, I just want to reiterate that the fact that you're here um, shows your interest. And in, um, please reach out to me, reach out to Steve, reach out to Brooke. We're here to address your questions. And um, it, you know, 
Truth in Lending. I've been on the front lines of transformative care for a long time. And um, uh, you just have to have a commitment and resources from your facilities to do this. And once you do it, it's just really, really rewarding for you personally and for your patients. But it does take time and it does take resources. Again, I'm not being paid by the American Heart Association. $2,000 is just totally inexpensive to do this. But the price of doing it is to set up the team and uh, to implement it. And that's where you need commitment and resources and tools to help support that. So please reach out to me if you have questions about that. Well, thank you, everybody. And as I said, we'll be sending out a follow-up email. And um, if you have any questions about this certification or any of our other certifications, please don't hesitate to send an email to the certification at heart.org um, email address. And again, thank you for your time. Take care. Thank you very much. Thanks very much.